you. Are you ready? Yeah. All oh, right. On August the 4th, 2010, Frank Amanda was sentenced to death in Jakarta, Indonesia, for narcotics conviction. He was arrested outside his apartment on the 19th of October, 2009, after being followed and watched for some, some time by police, after being a courier and, and keeper of Shabu, which is known in most parts of the world as crystal meth. His trial was anything but fair. But one thing, the drugs which Frank had been storing in his apartment was, was switched out during the trial. It's a known fact that everyone in the prisons in Jakarta that the police sell and use these drugs themselves after con confiscating them from those they arrest. When Frank tried to protest during his trial to point out that the drugs in the courtroom were not the same drugs that he'd been arrested with, he was told that he was out of line and his concerns were completely ignored. In fact, the judge was indignant that Frank was, was even mentioning it, and threateningly told Frank that if he continued to question, he would make things harder for himself. All of his trial was in Indonesian, and prior to this, during his interrogations, he was threatened with torture if he didn't sign the police's version of what had happened to him. He was coerced and asked to sign documents he didn't understand. His lawyer was only present on one occasion and even then spent a good part of his time doodling on a piece of paper instead of defending Frank. As lawyers were supposed to be, his boss, his boss was beaten so badly that he had to be hospitalised. He has been witness to torture and to beatings of other, others on numerous occasions since his arrest and his imprisonment. He was never told what his rights, what his rights were in Indonesia, and he was simply given a paper by the U.S. Embassy, basically stating that the Indonesian police had total authority, that whatever they say is the final word, regardless of evidence, and that the U.S. government if you didn't have to all be some girlies. <laughs> Shows your commitment. Would intervene in any way. So we are left to try and find a way and to urge the US government to involve themselves as they are so active doing in many other situations the world over. I'd like to tell you a bit about my my brother, this is one of commander wrote it, and his conviction. It is it is all that many people have to come to define him after learning about his crime. Frank is 47 years old. He is not just my brother, but one of my dearest friends. He's the best friend I've ever had. Who has been there for me in hard times to encourage me, make me laugh, like few people ever have done. If you met him, you would be face to face with a person who is friendly, funny, jovial and tender hearted. The kind of person who would look out for the best interests of others, even those, even if those others couldn't care less about him. He's the kind of person who isn't afraid to cry. He, he's not afraid to cry with you if you're going through a difficult time. Did he commit the crime? Yes. And he does deeply regret having gotten involved with the underworld and now where he finds himself. Does he deserve to die for it or to spend the rest of his life decaying in a third world prison? Absolutely not. Frank is a US citizen, but had he been born just a few weeks later, he would have been ed eligible for dual citizenship with Germany and maybe it would have been easier for us to find the help with the German government than with the US government. Since most states in the US accept the death penalty as a valid form of punishment, it is difficult to gain so much support from the government officials unless we find officials who are already opposed to it. We can see how little of a deterrent the crime of the death penalty has been here and how rotten it is with flaws.
Our mother in Germany is every sense of the word. And we spend many parts of our childhood here in Berlin. Our life takes us down twists and turns, some which we could never anticipate and some which seem very cruel and unfair. Others may have made different choices, but as the old saying goes, it's best not to judge until you have walked a mile in someone else's shoes. Why did Frank get, get this sentence while his boss only received 15 years? Why did the others who were involved do not get any, any prison time at all? Well, the answer to that lies in the fact that they paid off the police early on with $28,000 and they were let go. In Indonesia, money talks in a way that you cannot imagine. Why is it that the man who is the lowest of the totem pole and <coughs> this whole operation ends up getting the death sentence? The judge said Frank was being given the death sentence because he had corrupted the children of Indonesia. And meanwhile, behind the scenes, scenes Frank was told that if he came up with a gift of a large sum of money, maybe the amount of $50,000, he might be able to have his sentence reduced. His crime then really has become that he doesn't have enough money to pay to stay alive. Further questions are, why doesn't the United States government do anything to help its own citizen? The only help Frank gets from the embassy is a quarterly visit to ensure that he hasn't been tortured. Yet fellow US inmates that Frank got to know was tortured and the US Embassy did absolutely nothing. Though they told me, his sister, that they did, didn't know of any of the US citizen ever having been harmed while being in prison in Jakarta. While Frank languishes in a dirty, hot cell, not much bigger than a single-sized bed, in a prison in one of the most corrupt countries in the world, awaiting execution, we, his family and friends, have yet to find any real tangible help for him. He is on the last of his appeals to reduce his sentence. One of the great ironies of all this is that Frank is possibly the only person in the whole prison, including guard and police, who doesn't ever do drugs. We ask you to help us to get the word out. And if you know anyone at all, you might think might be, able, might be able to help us, please let us know. She goes on to say that they do have a Facebook page called Voices for Frank Lando. On his page, we have an address where you can send a postcard to Frank at the prison. He needs all the support and signs of help that we can get to him. He's 16 hours a day locked in a cramped cell without adequate food, water or ventilation. We hope and believe that by our efforts and prayers for him, that we can one day be back here in Berlin, where we spent many of our summers as children. Once again, be in his favourite place, Berlin. I'm sure he'd be happy to meet you all and to thank you all in person for caring and trying to save his life. And when you think conditions on death row in the USA are bad enough, we can't even begin to think what they must be like in Indonesia. You know, it's horrible. So if you're not, if you're not, um, familiar with the name of Frank Amanda, have a, have a read up on him. But his sister was supposed to be here today, but unfortunately she couldn't make it either.